Everyone wants to take their business, their skills, to the next level. Small and mid-sized business owners have exceptional insight into how to do this. They endure and thrive because they find ways to overcome the challenges that come their way, and they can teach us valuable lessons to apply to our own companies and lives. Stephen Nooner, founder and owner of Alkali, a company with a unique process that helps businesses more effectively buy and manage their insurance programs. And Bob Gibbons, builder of Riata Commercial Realty, a real estate advisor and tenant advocate, are two prominent Metroplex businessmen who, along with their weekly guests, will ask their and your probing questions, finding impactful solutions that will help you reach for the next level. Here are your hosts, Stephen Nooner and Bob Gibbons. Welcome to the next level, conversations that propel business. This is your host, Bob Gibbons. And I'm Stephen Nooner. What are we doing today, Stephen? Well, we're <laughs> going to have some fun talking about something that I know that I'm very passionate about, and I know that you care a lot about it, too. Let's say passion. Uh, passion. I don't know about passion, but uh, highly important, absolutely. Okay. So... Uh, <laughs> There's other things I'm passionate about. I don't know. That so if Bob falls asleep in the middle of this conversation, <laughs> you'll know why. Uh, we're going to talk about branded processes today, or unique processes is the way we refer to it. Yeah, internally. and a branded process is really something that a, that you do in your company for your clients that you've put a name to it. It's mm-hmm. a process by which you actually conduct business, mm-hmm. and it may be it's probably different than your competitors. We hope. We hope, yeah. So uh, it's really a way, even in in an industry that some people might think is a um, a commodity, Mm -hmm. you know, the... You know, all real estate agents are the same. All insurance agents are the same, et cetera. Uh, it's, it's a great way to differentiate. And so our listeners who are, you know, entrepreneurs or want to be entrepreneurs start a company. They need to really be thinking about how are they different than everybody else. And uh, so we're going to talk about that. But yeah, we'll, let's start, we will talk about it. We'll let's start, start with a quote. quote. Okay. Um, in today's world, everyone wants purpose, but no one is willing to do the work to find it. Do the work to find my purpose. Don't I mean? Isn't, don't I need that purpose before I can start a company? Well, that's a great question. I was actually thinking of it in context to uh, to what our conversation is today. So, what's the context? Well, what's the distinction between Riata and the Riata Lease Track, your branded process, and every uh, or or the way that you conduct business than every other realtor? It's that you you enter it with a purpose, right? You've thought through the experience you want to create for your clients. Etc. Right. Like at Alkali, I know that we we've thought we'll talk about it, but we've really, really thought through that and worked with our clients to actually create it. So um, I think that a lot of times the distinction in them, um, if they're not just marketing and they really are unique branded processes, that they, there's been a lot of thoughtfulness put to it in creating that experience. And so where a lot of other people in my industry, I'll pick on my industry, um, they just sell stuff and they're just reactionary. So they're purposeful about trying to get the meeting. They're purposeful about trying to sell something. But where our industry falls down a lot is after they make the sale, then they don't a lot of times deliver yeah. right? that ongoing continued uh, experience for the client. So does, a, uh, does let's just go ahead and jump into it. Let's then. do it. So, so branded process. Yes. So what is the difference between a branded process and just marketing? To me, it's, I mean, it's integrity, right? It, it's um, the follow through. It's keeping with what your word is. Whatever you say you're going to deliver, it's actually coming through. If you market a certain way that you're going to do X, Y, and Z, but then you don't deliver that, then to me, it's just marketing on one end. And if it's a truly a branded process, the word of essence there is process, Yeah. right? And that it's something that you actually follow. So I hear a lot about branding uh-huh. and everybody, you know, you can go to a million seminars and everybody's talking about branding and you hear all these yeah. agencies talking about branding mm-hmm. and that's supposed to be all about who you are, mm-hmm. but the branded process is branding what you actually do. It's not so much, I mean, it is who you are because what you do determines who you are and who you are determines what you do a lot of times, but You're I mean, a headache. That's deep. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, the branded process is really in a way, it's sort of putting together a roadmap of your process that you are committing to your client in advance that you're going to do for them. Yes. Yeah. I mean, to me again, process. 
right? So you're not just the Wizard of Oz behind the curtain pulling strings and doing what you're going to do without them seeing it. Well, or a lot of stuff. I mean, it, there's, uh, I mean, I know in our case, there's a front stage experience. We tell them what we're going to deliver to them, but there, yeah, no, there's a whole a hundred steps. I mean, like literally one thing that shows up in our branded process, right. Might have 20 steps on the backstage, you know, behind the curtain that we're doing for the client to create that result. Right. So that, I mean, it's not like you're telling them every single step along the way, all right, I'm doing this piece now, but in your branded process, mm -hmm. it, that's all part of it. So if they, want to know about it they can find it yeah they can talk about it they can ask you about it yeah so you know to me it seems like that branded process is sort of your commitment to the client as to what's going to be happening on yeah. their behalf yeah and i even go one step further i mean this is a, a, my own personal uh feel about things and the way that we want to be as a company right so as i won't even tell our client um about all the things in our branded process even even our you know depending on which way they're engaging us um if it's an eight step or a seven step or a five step process i'm not going to talk to them about all five steps and bore them to tears we only talk about the steps of our branded process in connection with something that they've already expressed as a pain point right so i only right. talk about it in the context of how it can create value for them because otherwise i feel like it is just marketing and sales so um i always we train our team in fact that, that some of us do better than others, um, but we don't even talk about it unless the client, we say, gives you permission to do it. And the way they give permission is by expressing something that one of our steps in our branded process can solve. Okay. So then the branded process in that situation becomes a document for your internal use, even more so than for the external use, being external being your client. Well, they may still get all five steps or eight steps or whatever, but we're only going to talk to them about the steps that, that actually are meaningful to them that they've expressed a pain point on, right? Okay. Um, because some of them they just need to happen. Like I would imagine with yours, there are certain things that just need to happen regardless, regardless if I want them or not. If you're going to do your work, you got to be done. I just may not care about them. But if I've got a pain point, right? Um, to me, again, it's a philosophical thing. I, you know, I want to hear about the things. Um, if I'm in considering engaging your service, I don't want you to throw up everything that you do on me. I want to know how you're going to solve or improve my life, right? And so that's what we train our team to do. Right. Yeah, we have the whole branded process. We've got eight steps, but nobody wants to hear about all eight steps. I don't, and I love the company. I helped create it, right? Sure, sure. So, does that make sense? Yeah. No, I get you. All right. So we'll, let's let's give an example then of a branded process. Okay. So you have something called the Empowered Advantage. We do. And so the Empowered Advantage, I'm looking at it right here, and uh, I'll hold it up in front of our camera for anybody that's watching on the video can see it. But uh, can they go to your website and find this anywhere? Uh, they can see, I, I mean, of course, I mean, they can see basically a draw shot video of kind of the experience of what, what it creates for the client. Okay. So they can go to alkaliservices.com and yes. they can find this. Or so, if they're personal insurance, they can go to Alkali Insurance. So it says at the top, the empowered advantage, make insurance work for you. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of stuff on here. There's, there's this sort of circle with all these little spokes coming off of them. And, uh, you have things called the success lab, the quantitative success formula, the partnership accelerator yeah. and several others. So tell me about this. What does this really mean to so me? What it means is, it is we actually early on and, and I've expressed this on the show before, but we went to it. We backed into this. I wasn't because I knew what I was even doing. I was in an co entrepreneurial coaching program through just Strategic Coach. They were talking about having, you know, a unique process, a repeatable process, a you know, ready myth. You need to have a process if you want to be able to scale your business. And so I said, huh, that makes sense. But I'd gone through personal change in my life and, and I'd become a Christian and a believer and I want to treat people the way I want to be treated. So I was like, gosh, I'm going to create this process. Maybe I should ask the people that I serve what they want. And so we got a bunch of data and then it took about three years for me to reverse engineer some of the things we we're doing to make a better experience for our clients. Then we work with those same clients to name it. So they actually help name these processes and that's how we do it. So for each of those things, the success lab, there's, I can say, well, this is what that means to you, Bob. This is where we get clear on what's important to you, you and your business. What does success look like to you? You know, I'm not, you know, our people aren't paid commission based on how much product they can sell you. So 
our main objection is to get really clear if it's employee benefits what do your employees really value what's the game plan what's the target and then we're going to go out and do that as efficiently as possible we need first to know what success looks like right maybe it has nothing to do with rates maybe it has to do mm-hmm. with the service issue the service issues you're having with your current provider maybe so what is the problem we're trying to solve or or three to five problems we're trying to solve and then how do we how do we go in? What We've got our success target. What's our roadmap to make that happen, right? So when you say that you met with your clients to come up with this, what did that conversation look like? Yeah, yeah it was, it was um, hey, what annoys and frustrates you about buying and managing insurance? And then I got some info, and then I went back to coach, and one of my peers was like, hey, did you give them permission? I'm like, what do you mean? They're like, well, you're a nice guy. People aren't going to want to hurt your feelings. So I actually went back, and I said, hey, Seriously, don't worry about hurting my feelings. Is there anything else? And I got a lot, um, and and it hurt my feelings for a minute. But <laughs> now, wait a minute did your did your friend ask you if you'd given them permission to hurt your feelings because the data that you were showing him was not it was light significant yeah enough? it was light it was light you know and I could explain away a lot right and so that was really really great coaching because when I went back I really found out there were some things that. You know, people just didn't get, and we were just doing it because I was so ingrained in the industry. I wasn't seeing it from the client's perspective. And the only company that I had uh, uh, really, really built on my own was Alkali. So I had never really been, I, I've always been a, like an insider from the day I opened it, right? The day we opened our doors, I've been building an insurance. Not like I operated another company. Um, I was a partner in another company, but I, I didn't build it. I didn't, I didn't make a lot of those decisions. So I hadn't had the user experience. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it really opened my eyes and got me out of my own way and really helped me get clear. And some of it wasn't stuff that we could do anything about. Some of it was just, um, it's tied to the insurance companies, but we can minimize it. We could deliver it in a slightly different way to help it easier, for, make it easier for the client to digest. Right. So that's interesting because, you know, in my situation, I did not go to all my clients and ask them their opinions before I created the Riata Lease Track sure. system. And <clears throat> maybe I should still do that. And I know you've been encouraging me to do that. I, I have not should. done it yet. Yeah. But the way I came about it was I had worked for 20 years on the other side, so to speak. So right. I've worked for landlords, people that own companies that own high-rise office buildings around the country. Right. And I'd been a property manager and a leasing agent and an asset manager. So I'd managed and dealt with the landlord side of managing office buildings, leasing office buildings, and inter- interacting with tenants for mm-hmm. a long time. So whenever I became a tenant advocate, mm-hmm. and now I only represent the tenant, mm-hmm. I kind of used that 20 years of experience, and I sat down and said to myself, all right, what are the things that these people really need to be protected from? Yes. And what information do they need yes. to make decent, rational decisions? Mm-hmm. And how can I provide them ongoing service throughout the lease term? Yes. And and that was all for their benefit, but also I looked at it for what was for my benefit. Uh-huh. So for my benefit, part of the problem of my industry is that I make a sale, quote, you know, a client signs a lease right. on average for five years. Right. So I only make one sale have one revenue event once every five years on average. Right. So what can I do to stay in cli- in contact with that client throughout right. that p- period of time to, and, and not just be annoying. Right. You know, just not calling up and say, so what you doing? How's everything? Right. You still remember me? Or not like, Hey, you want to do a radio show together? So we can spend every <laughs> week together. Exactly. <laughs> you better renew with me. <laughs> I'm just kidding. So, you know, my point was it had a marketing aspect to it for me sure. to stay in front of my client, right. but, the goal was to stay in front of them in a way that was actually meaningful and provided value to them. And as a client, I really value the auto lease track. And it, uh, it's, I know has saved us money that the landlord was, you know, intentionally, unintentionally trying to cram down on us that maybe we didn't need to be paying. And, and, it, and it's been, um, but I didn't know what I didn't know. So my reason why I'm challenging you to go talk to him as your friend and someone who loves you is because, um, you got to figure out how, like, if you had initially told me about the Riata lease track when I was evaluating hiring you the first time, right? I didn't really know what that meant or what that would value, right? Like, what's the value of that, right? So, would I have bought bought from you based on that? I don't know, right? And it goes back to what I tell our team is like, hey, it's just salesmanship, it's just noise. If we go out and throw up our empowered advantage eight steps on someone, find out what the problem is and then figure out how to solve that problem. And, and you can talk about if I'm like worried that my landlord's hosing me throughout the year, 
um, on this or that or the other, right? Um, then all of a sudden now you've got the permission to really, really sell the Riata lease track because you've got a way to solve that problem for me, right? Yeah. And, and if they don't know, like I didn't, then maybe it's just a matter of probing, asking questions. Well, how are you handling this? Did you know that your landlord can do this, this, and this? It can result in this, you know? And then if they say, whatever, I'm not worried about it, then they don't value the Riata lease track. If they right. say, hey, you know what? I didn't even know that. That's really important to me. Then to me, then you now have permission. Um, but just having the one thing and hammering that, like I said, I, I bet there's more things if you go and have that conversation. Because I, I was, my mind was blown. My mind was blown. I mean, just little simple stuff. Like, hey, man, we've been doing business with you. I love y'all. Y'all are great. Um, but, you know, why do I have to put my name and address on an app? I know that I've got to fill out this, you know, questionnaire and some of this stuff I have to fill out because it's, you know, it's asking me questions that are kind of underwriting related um, to our business. But, but man, you, you've got our name and address and I mean, can you at least kind of, I was like, duh, like that's annoying, right? Yeah. It's just so simple, right? That little slightest tweak, highest peak. And so I guarantee a lot of our competitors don't do that. And so we, we pride ourselves in being easy to work with. So I always tell our clients the first year is the most difficult, but I, I identified that that's such an easy one, mm -hmm. right? There were harder ones, like how we paid our people, et cetera, et cetera. But those were easy little things that made a difference, um, that we've, that we found out. So let's talk about communicating the branded process a little bit more to the client, because okay. you mentioned something a minute ago that you said you didn't know what you didn't know. Yeah. And therefore, the lease track wouldn't have mattered to you necessarily. Yeah. So it seems to me like part of our job is to help our clients with what they don't know. Now, does that mean that they have to become experts on it? And, you know, we have to educate them on it in great detail and all right. that? No. I mean, I, they don't want to... They don't want to be in our business. That's why they're hiring us. But I, I I agree and disagree with that statement, right? So, and again, it's a philosophical, so we may just agree to disagree. But to me, if I am not, if you don't ask questions that cause me to think, yeah, and tell you that's important, mm -hmm. if you tell me about the Riata lease track, you're just selling me something, right? Right. Um, I, I don't know about you, but we probably, I want to, I want to be a partner in our clients. So I don't, I don't want them to feel like they're being sold something. Right. Sure. Um, I want to be engaged to solve problems and, and get hired to do that. And I, and I, and I say that almost jokingly, cause I know you and I know your heart and you're not trying to sell something, but, right. um, it, you know, some, I mean, I, I had to address what, like, and here's the other challenge with it. I tell our team, Hey, look, just because you know, treating someone the way they want, you know, way you want to be treated. Well, you want to be treated because you want to be heard, right? So just because sometimes something is a lot of money to you doesn't mean it's a lot of money to the client. And that was a really hard one for me because, you know, we try to be really, really good stewards and every penny, you know, and so we really, and I, I would, I remember having a client and they were just like, you know, I don't, I love you. We're, we're not doing away with you, but I don't want you to run your process this year. I'll, I'll, I mean, it was, on, it was on a healthcare deal and they were like, I'll take that all day long because we're growing, we're opening up these locations. And I wanted to run the process because I thought I could save them money. I thought the insurance company was giving them an unfair renewal. And they're like, Hey, look, you know, and I, I was like, but I can literally, I know I can save you money if we yeah. just got to run the process and do our negotiations and everything else. He's like, look, appreciate it i love that your heart's that way but he's like man we're opening locations we're growing that's not where i need to spend our energy right now we need to keep the the insurance stable for our employees yeah and so you know does that make sense yeah and i, I know what you're talking about because i've i've had a similar thing i mean to, to relocate a company from one building to another yeah. is a lot of not just cost but disruption to the business mm -hmm. and you can't really put a cost on that as easily i mean if you're a law firm where you're billing by the hour yeah it's a little easier to calculate the number of hours it's going to take to make the move so yeah you can count quantify that much more but for most companies they can't really quantify that disruption very easily right so yeah there's a certain value and certain clients that will say look i don't I don't want you to go out and survey all the other buildings in town and find out all my other options and use that to right. to really you know put the landlord in a competitive position. I'm happy with what they're offering. Let's just get it done. Right, and that's that's fine. But if they don't know what that process normally would be, then 
they have the the risk of making an uninformed decision that could cost them money. And and like you say, I don't always know what that threshold is beyond which they're willing. They're going to say, well, all right, beyond that number. Yeah. Now I want to do that. And they don't even know sometimes. Yeah. So that's, I mean, to be fair, but back to, are you going to throw up the whole Riata process on me? Right. Am I going to throw up? Uh, Cause I know you have the lease track and I want you to go talk to your clients. Cause I think you deliver a lot more value beyond the lease track. Mm-hmm. Um, and, but for, for, so for us where we've got eight steps, I'm not throwing up all eight steps. All of them are points that I know we can a lot of times deliver more value than what they're receiving, but they mm-hmm. may not give a flip about it. Right. So it's asking those questions. And if they're not, if that's not a concern to them, if their service is not the concern or if it, you know, X, Y, or Z, I mean, pick it, things that we solve for aren't a concern, then why? I mean, but then how do you, I mean, it seems like to me the process, the branded process Mm -hmm. is a differentiating feature for Alkali Uh or for Riata or whomever. Mm -hmm. And so like with it, with a client that I have that I'm, you know, somebody calls me up and says, I want you to help me with finding a new location or renegotiating my lease. Right. You know, fine. I don't start talking to them about the Riata, Riata lease track system because that's the last step in the nine steps to lease an office space. Mm-hmm. So there's eight steps that I deal have to deal with before we ever even get to that. Mm-hmm. So I don't really even go into it with them mm-hmm. until sort of at the end. And then it's a conversation about why that's important. Well, go ahead. But for... A, for somebody who isn't a client yet, yeah. who I might be having a conversation about, you know, why why should you use me versus someone else? Mm-hmm. In that case, how do I then communicate that differentiating feature without going into some of those details? You're right. I don't have to throw up the whole thing on them. Yeah. But... But as, by asking questions is what I would say. Okay. Right. And then the, the second thing, I think I, I just uncovered a distinction too. So one of the things that's unique to us, especially on the benefit side, which where I'm, our process is most established because that's where the Empire Advantage was formed initially. Yeah. Um, the distinction might be too is um, we might talk about them because – we are not going to start quoting like we're, we're, we are delivering enough value now through our branded process um, that our clients are moving our message for us because we're doing we're creating great results for them. In fact, we just got a great referral from a, a client uh, that's been with us eight years, and they, they literally said they've been eight years his referral. I've, I've been with them eight years, and continuously they find ways to to save, hold the line, and improve our benefits. So it was like the best testimonial ever. It was so nice. Um, but when the, when the, the initial conversation, what they they sent it and said, "Hey, quote it, you know, quote it," and I said, "Whoa, we we can't do that." And so what we do that's distinction is, is we're not going to go do all that unless we've had a conversation, a success lab conversation. Sure. We know what success looks like, and you know whether or not you want to hire us. We will not quote. We don't do that. We we won't do that because we have to keep our in order to deliver on the process. And that's a big distinction from us and in, in our industry. Um, a lot of people will quote it because they just want to sell something. For us, we say. If we want to keep clients around that after eight years are still moving our message, we've got to deliver year over year on this process. It's got to be real. If I spend all my time out running and practice quotes and hoop jumping on a commoditized product like insurance where all of our rates can be the same, we're, we're, we're wasting a lot of resource and energy. So that, that might be one of the distinctions too because I, we don't move forward typically unless there's a, a commitment. But that that's further down the line. Uh, what I'm getting at is when you meet somebody mm-hmm. and they're like, well, so what do you do? Well, I'm an insurance oh. agent. You know, when it's early and you're not really in that position yeah. to. Well, then that is just marketing, right? Okay. So, so the branded process then can be used just, you know, for a marketing purpose. Sure. But there's a lot of substance behind it that actually deliver something much greater. So there's marketing, it's just generating interest. And so it might be like, huh, but there, I'm going to read a lease track. Well, that sounds unique, but I'm probably not there yet. Right. It's just trying right. to get me, you're trying to get into my consideration set. Now I'm like, I'm going to hire my leases coming up. I'm going to buy a building or we're going to lease. Right. Yep. And, and who am I going to use? That's now probably a sales conversation, right? Yeah. And, and like, for example, I, I had a, a guy that I was, that I met and I offered to, to uh, do the Riata lease track system or to put his lease into the lease track system uh-huh. 
um, even though I didn't do his lease originally. Mm -hmm. So he still had a few years left on his lease. And I said, look, you know, this is a service that I provide. I'm uniquely qualified to do this compared to all of my competitors. Because yeah. there's no other tenant rep I know in Dallas-Fort Worth that has the landlord experience that I do. So I feel like I'm in a better position to represent my clients than, than most of my competitors are. So I said, you know, this is why I created this system. Mm -hmm. And I would be happy to do this for you. And he didn't really... He said, yeah, you know, nod his head, gave me a few platitudes, and, he, and that was it. <laughs> and he never said boo about it again. So I, I went to lunch with him a while later, a few weeks later, and I said, hey, I, I really think this is something you need to do. And so he gave me the opportunity to explain a little bit more about it. And he said, well, wait a minute. So do, is this like a computer system where I have to go in and enter all my lease data? And I was like, no. All you have to do is give me a copy of your lease. That's really all I need is to get a copy of your lease. Yeah. And then I will do this for you. He's like, oh, well, then I'm in. I love it. That's a great thing. I just thought I was going to have to do a lot of work. He gave me a data entry project. <laughs> I've got 200 employees. and <laughs> So, I mean, what it showed me is yeah. the way I communicate to people about the, the service mm -hmm. is, was deficient. Mm -hmm. And so whether I was saying it in the wrong way, or I sent them an email that tries to explain it that was way too long, they're not going to read. Mm -hmm. I even, like you, I created one of those whiteboard videos to do it. It's only 57 seconds long. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking, who wouldn't watch that? Mm -hmm. Well, a lot of people won't watch Some that. Some people they don't want to, they're not interested. But they don't They don't have the need at the time. Yeah. Either, you know, because they're only going to watch it if they feel like they have a need and they think that this is going to solve it or because they have some relationship with me where they just do it out of obligation. And I'd make the case that the 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 relationship is what, because I know the individual, the relationship is what gave you the credibility to say, hey, you know, and right. talk deeper about the Leah. I got the to have Lee that chart, second, second conversation. Time. Yep. Yeah. If I didn't have that second conversation, it would have never happened. Yep. And, and, and he did go in and he is now a client. Congrats. So that was one of the cool things is, you know, part of the reason I do it is because I want to demonstrate my value uh -huh. long before there's a revenue event. And after. And after. So it is definitely there for clients that I've, I have represented, but I also want it to be there for those that I haven't to demonstrate my value. So it is a marketing effort and it is, there's a real cost to me to do it, but it's what I'm very willing to do. So... What's the essential thing? What just one thing? Like, if you were going to suggest to the audience, like your experience of your branded process and trying to, if they're going to create one for themselves, yeah, uh, make it real and make it something that hits the need of a client, whether they know it or not. Yep. Um, and I would say, ask the client, engage the client. Don't assume that you n know what they're going to want. We have our innovations from our business. We didn't even talk about them. Innovations have come to our business because of going and talking to our clients. All right. We got to cut a it lot there. of money. Nextlevelshow.com. See you next week. Have a great week. You have been listening to The Next Level, conversations that propel business with Stephen Nooner and Bob Gibbons. Join us every Tuesday at 1.30 p.m. for more prolific conversations that will take your business to the next level.